I remember in the depths of my, you know, struggles, calling my accountant going, I don't understand this. Like, why is it saying I'm profitable on the profit and loss, but I've got no money in my bank account. Like, what am I missing here? And the simple response is like, you know, income minus expenses equals profit, but that profit and loss isn't showing you the drawings that you've already taken out of the business, right? So it's, we've been set up to fail. That is the honest truth. Welcome to the Property Management Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Now, if you're an avid listener or you've only just found the podcast, I'd love to invite you to join me as a guest on the podcast. I think it's really important that we share each other's stories and we all have a story to tell. And if your inner voice is saying right now, but Kylie, I don't have anything to share, make it silent right now because that is just your imposter syndrome talking. I like to keep it real and being authentic is something that I value very highly. And if you are ready to tell your story, warts and all, then this is the place and I'm your person. So send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at that property mum and comment podcast and I'll share all the details to join me on the podcast there. Now, I cannot tell you how excited I am about sharing this episode with you. And it is something that I wish someone would have shared with me when I was starting my own business. And in this spirit of being authentic, I completely suck at maths and I was, and I was completely illiterate when it came, came to financial reporting. I would rather stab myself with hot pokers than go through a profit and loss report. And that was, that was until one meeting with a financial advisor changed everything. He said something so shocking, I didn't know what to say. I was literally gobsmacked. He said, wait for it, you made a million dollars last year. I know. Can you believe he told me something so shocking? My response after recovering was, well, where is all my money? And he replied, well, that is where the problem lies. Your expenses are actually exceeding your income. Meaning I had actually made zero profit, even though I had generated over a million dollars in revenue. And that was the moment that I knew I had to stop being illiterate and start being financially responsible, which is something I'll admit with all honesty again, I never was. And that, of course, goes back to my money story. The story I tell myself about money, and by the way, we all have a money story. And without boring you with too many details, my money story was that I wasn't worthy of money. Uh, I was a tight, if I had money, it meant that I was a tight ass. It meant that I was mean and stingy. And if I only lived once, I was going to experience everything in this lifetime I possibly could. If there was a trip overseas, I was in. If there was a concert to go to, yep, I'm in. So you get the picture. And I actually lived week to week for most of my adult life. And that mindset got super hard when I had kids and had more mouths to feed. And a back note, when I started my business, I actually had zero dollars in my bank account. And I just lost my house back in the 2011 floods in Queensland. And I was lining up for food vouchers and government financial support to get me through that period. And luckily, I was one of the lucky ones and my insurance company did pay up. But until that insurance money came through, I was literally living on generosity. So I've certainly come a long way. And for me, my financial journey will never be easy because like I said, it just doesn't come naturally to me. But now as a single mum, I need to take control more than ever and ensure that I am building profitable businesses, not just making revenue. And now I am no expert on this financial stuff, like I said, but luckily for you, my guest today is. Amy Bett is the founder of Lady Without Limits and co-founder of a new Carver-based beverage company, Drink Milo, a profit-first professional and co-host of the Lady Without Limits podcast. Amy failed in her first business because of cash flow problems. And when she learned that more than 80% of business owners who don't succeed, don't succeed because of a cash flow, a cash flow problem, she set out on a mission to reverse that awful statistic. 
As a profit first professional, Amy discovered the only two numbers that matter in business and the formula for actually reaching financial freedom. And since she knows the financial struggles that business owners are facing right now, she's not about to slow down teaching business owners how to effectively manage their money and master their mindset. She's walking the talk and documenting her journey of creating her beverage brand with these financial principles. Amy is a wife and mother to three little ladies and together they live at Barwon Heads in Victoria with their beautiful border collie, Frankie. Now, I absolutely love this conversation and hearing Amy's story from flailing business to thriving. She also shares an amazing daily practice I'll think you'll absolutely love as well. So take a listen. Amy, thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. Now, before we dive in, can you share with our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started doing what you're doing now? Yeah, sure. Firstly, Kylie, thank you so much for having me. I feel very blessed to be here chatting to you today. So I became a profit first professional. I wish I could tell you that it started because I love numbers and, you know, I was an accountant or anything like that. No, I actually failed in my first business and I was in real financial trouble. And that's how, you know, through, through my journey of getting out of that and hearing about profit first and the profit first method is you know, why I'm here today talking about it because I just know how many business owners struggle with financial hardship. I live in Bowen Heads. I've got um, three daughters who, you know, take up a lot of my time and, you know, they're they're a fun bunch. But um, yeah, I became a business owner by mistake, actually. My husband, he suffered a brain injury uh, right when I was about to have Annie, our second daughter. And I delved into business ownership because I had to, he wasn't well enough for me to take care of, for him to take care of Annie. And I didn't want to go back to work five days with a newborn. I didn't know how that was going to work. So I used my event management skills to actually go and take on big corporate events here in the Geelong region. And it worked really, really well. I was able to secure big events really quickly for the likes of Cottonwood, Country Road, um, David Jones, lots of big events. And it looked really successful from the outside. And I was bringing in, you know, decent money, but the expenses just kept rising and rising. And I just had no idea how to handle the cash flow effectively and keep on top of my tax and all of those things. I'd come from a really privileged privileged position uh, where I had access to big budgets previously working for a, you know, a big corporate organization to then having to bootstrap it and, and really get an a bird's eye view of what being a business owner is all about. And so I really, really struggled and I tried to find the answers and it was really difficult. And it wasn't until I actually decided to step out of my business and lick my wounds and, you know, recover from that shame, I guess, that I came across the profit first method and everything really changed for me. Yeah. Can we just pause that for a second? You said that you were, your your husband was seriously injured or Uh, had a brain injury that you, I'm assuming you've had to care for him as well. You're about to have a baby and you've started a business, all three things at the one time. You are superwoman. Tell me a little bit more about, about how you juggled all of that. What was your, what was your mindset like getting through that? Yeah, to be honest, it was a really crazy time and a really uncertain time. I guess we actually both worked for the Cottonwood Group and we had really stable incomes and we loved what we did. And so for him to have his accident, he had, um, a, 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 it's called post-concussive syndrome. So he had a couple of really bad concussions that, um, took him out of his career and really had a huge impact on his life. And luckily he, um, he has recovered to a degree now, which is great, but for a really long period of time, he, you know, he was very seriously impacted and yeah, we you know everything changed for us. So I think I've always, had an attitude and a mindset of we've got this like that was actually the mantra that my husband and I had before we got married was we've got this whatever kind of comes to us we'll we'll find a way and I think that's something that my parents really instilled in us no matter what adversity comes to us we're going to be okay um and so I just was kind of like all right shit what are we going to do and let's just let's just do it I've always kind of been someone to take action and not really think about everything too much um and that 
does serve me. It also gets me into trouble sometimes because I commit to things, you know, every now and then that are really big. But, um, but yeah, I was really lucky that I guess I have great family around me as well. And we just, we just decided to soldier on. And I think also my relationships with big corporates in Geelong and the region really helped me because they already had worked with me at the Cottonall Group and they trusted me. So they, they gave me events pretty quickly. That's fantastic. So what is the Profit First Method? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So the Profit First Method was originally created by an entrepreneur over in America. His name is Mark Michalowicz. And he is this guy who actually, again, suffered from his suffered with his own financial struggles. And it was when he was in the depths of his despair that it just came to him a way of separating your cash flow and really finding a way to have visibility of your money at any one time and not have to keep your head in spreadsheets constantly. So Profit First is a method where we open multiple bank accounts, so five key bank accounts, and we separate our cash flow out into those categories. So that's your profit, your tax, your owner's pay, your operating expenses, and you've got a separate income as well. Therefore, you're really taking care of all of the financial priorities in your business and you've got clarity of how much money you've actually got to spend on expenses and pay yourself and and you know it allows you to be ahead of your taxes rather than you know having everything lumped together there's money in the bank account so you think that there's money and you think you're going okay but then all of a sudden you know all of these expenses drop you get a tax bill and you're like oh my goodness what am I going to do here yeah been there done that and I'm sure a lot of my audience would can relate to that as well you think you're making all this money's coming into your bank account and then you get your tax done and all of a sudden, you know, you've got 30, 50, even more sometimes thousand dollars to pay in tax that you hadn't accounted for. And where do you find that income? And there's nothing like that a tax bill or debt to put you under financial pressure, put you into a really, your mindset spiraling out of control. Yep. Particularly when you've then got to keep paying tax, like on any more money that you're earning, you're paying tax on that as well. So it can feel like you're just getting a double whammy at the time. And I see so many business owners that just feel really crippled by it. Um, and I've been in that position myself. But um, I guess on the flip side of that, I've also seen business owners come through huge um, you know, financial strain and then transform themselves. And then I know my favorite uh, messages that I get from people are, oh my God, I just paid my first quarter of tax when I had the money sitting there in the bank account. And I'd like, I cry, I honestly cry because I've been there and I know what a significant milestone that is. It's sometimes not about, you know, I crossed a million dollars of revenue. I did this. Actually, sometimes it's just as significant to be able to pay your tax up front. Absolutely. So talk us through that then, break that down a little bit. How can business owners actually get in control of that cash flow and heaven forbid, pay their tax um, before it's actually due? Yeah. Okay. So funnily enough, it's actually really simple. So we I think a lot of business owners think that money is really difficult and it's really hard and, you know, it's above their head, but actually, um, there's a really simple process to downloading your financial reports and reading the information that you need so that you've got an understanding of how you're performing. And once you've got that financial clarity of, you know, okay, how much profit is in the business? What are my expenses? What am I paying myself? Like all of those five key categories, it can really allow you to see what's actually going on. And then it's very clear if you need to raise your prices or, you know, if things are going as, as, as you would like to. So the first step is actually just doing that cash flow analysis on your business and seeing how things truly are. And then, you know, opening up the bank accounts to then start managing it more effectively. So we've got a process where um, we work by Percentages actually, because percentages might seem really complicated, but really it's small numbers broken down by a hundred. So it's really easy to understand, okay, well, my expenses are 60% of my business. I've got to put away 13% of my income in, in taxes, for example, or whatever those percentages are for you. Um, it's like understanding your financial health, working out what your percentages are, and then um, basically allocating it into your bank accounts so that you've got the right amount of money where it needs to go. So why do business owners struggle when it comes to managing their money? Why? why because I, per, it doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not um, financial. I've got so many money stories that all involves me not keeping any money. 
and letting go of money. If there's an experience to be had, an overseas holiday, a shopping trip, a girls weekend, I'm there, I'm all in. And regardless of whether I've got the money or not to do it at the time, um, I'm all in for that experience. So uh, that's yeah. why I find it really hard to, yeah. to manage money. But, uh, you know, is that similar for other business owners? Is it the stories oh, we hold? Totally. Yes, it is. It's the stories that, we t- that we're told, well, we're telling ourselves that money is really difficult, but also we, we haven't got great mentors. Like we're often not told a really simple process of being able to do it. I remember in the depths of my, you know, struggles, calling my accountant going, I don't understand this. Like, why is it saying I'm profitable and the profit and loss, but I've got no money in my bank account. Like, what am I missing here? And the simple response is like, you know, income minus expenses equals profit, but that profit and loss isn't showing you the drawings that you've already taken out of the business, right? So it's, we've been set up to fail. That is the honest truth. And there's accountants and bookkeepers out there to this day that actually still recommend that you just have one bank account to manage your cash flow. But then that's so confusing because how hard is it to open your bank account and then just mentally separate all of the money that you need in different areas? It's, it's really difficult. It's, it's almost not possible. So then we just go and we think we've got more money than we do and we end up spending our tax and all of those things. But there is a better way. And a couple of myths that come up, people get scared of multiple bank accounts because they think that they're going to have to pay a lot of fees. But there's so many banks in Australia that have either low fees or no fees. Um, and they also think it might be more of an accounting nightmare with a lot of reconciling. But you can just set up simple bank rules and that reconciling process is so easy like it, it's not a barrier to having financial clarity and being able to protect yourself um from getting into these financial situations and it actually helps you to bring more abundance into your life as well because you feel more empowered with money and then you know if you do choose to go on the girls weekend away and have that experience which i'm with you i would do that too at least you have the financial empowerment and you know what's going on so you can pre-plan and how you're going to get that money back or what you're going to do um, you've just got more control. I love that. And so this is all stuff that you teach inside the Profit First Method? Yeah. So I've got this really simple program where I teach the Profit First Method. I break it down into three steps, how to read your financial data, um, set up your bank accounts, and then how much money you know you, needs to put, you need to put into each bank account to get you on the right financial path. And we also talk about things like, um, you know, do you need to change your pricing we look at you know do you need to cut some dead weight of expenses that aren't valuing you know adding value to your business like we go through some of those simple steps that will help you back to the path of profitability if things aren't working and we've got an awesome community with lots of support fantastic so if it, for so real estate businesses uh so there's a lot of there's property management only businesses which a lot of my audience are but then there's also sales businesses as well so we've got sales and property management Property management is our stable cash flow. It just comes in every single week, fortnight, month. But then sales, we hit a bit. Of, it's a bit of a roller coaster, depending on the sales cycle, as you are probably very well aware. So, how do we manage that inconsistent cash flow? If, for example, uh, our property management expenses aren't enough to cover our expenses, how yeah. do we manage that? Oh, I love this because my business, my previous business, I also had inconsistent cash flow. I would get you know, say $30,000 from an event and then all of a sudden I wouldn't get paid for another few months. And so it was such a roller coaster up and down, but great, we've got money. And then, oh my God, we've got nothing to pay for nothing. Like it was, it was really tough, right? And that was the serious, like that's what I was going through. Um, and so what we need to do is we just need to look at our cash flow in averages. So we look at a time period. So say you're looking at the last 12 months of what's been going on in your business. Um, and then you're like, okay, on average, how much income came every month, came in every month? And then what were my expenses, which gives you a baseline of what your true income actually is. Because a lot of business owners really struggle when they've got a lot of money coming in and then there's not much money. It's like, how, like, you know, what is my financial position? Like how much am I actually earning? Um, and so if we can just be like, okay, on average over that 12 months, I actually made 20 grand a month, whatever it is. And then my expenses are six grand a month or whatever. It really allows you to prepare and make sure that you've got enough money for those expenses. When you have those bigger months, you're not going and spending it all. 
you're actually putting money aside in say a drip account to have that money sitting there to pay for those smaller months of revenue. Does that make sense? Okay, tell me, would you like to make maintenance your superpower? Well, you can, and you don't even need to tell anyone, it's all thanks to Tappy, a powerful property care software that takes all the pain, stress, and chaos out of dealing with maintenance and turns it into a predictable process that is reliable and frictionless, where every maintenance process is a smooth experience for everyone with value adds that your owners and tenants will absolutely love. And it seamlessly integrates with your property management software too. And here's the bonus, it can actually help grow your business as well. And if you're rolling your eyes at me right now and thinking, yeah, right, I've heard all this before, then do yourself a favor and book in for a demo at tappy.com.au. Mention that property mum and receive one month free on Tappy. That absolutely does. And I guess that comes down to sort of forecasting or planning, looking at your previous 12 months and being disciplined then about putting that money aside, even if there is an opportunity to, you know, have some fun or go away or do something else. So does, does discipline come into it or is that mindset? How, how does that work? It's a bit of both. Like it's a bit of discipline and a bit of mindset, but also it's just having the awareness because I think often because we don't know what sales are coming tomorrow, for example, it's really hard. I think a lot of business owners probably really struggle to pre-plan, but I think if it's just very clear that, okay, I've got $5,000 of, of expenses every month. And I, you know, roughly think that I can get three sales a, you know, I don't know how many sales would you say is quite particular with, with a property, with sales in the real estate industry? Uh, well, recently we've had an amazing sales period. So I would say 10. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. So I would just, I would just be like, look, I'm going to be conservative for the first three months while I'm getting my handle on things and I'm seeing the trends of cash flow. And I'm going to make sure that I've got enough money for my expenses. So I'm going to put that aside. What we really like to focus on as a profit first professional is a profit account, which is really exciting. And so we like to put a certain percentage of your income into that profit account. And guess what? That profit account is a bonus to the to you as the business owner above the wage that you pay yourself so then you know you're paying yourself your standard wage that you would pay yourself you know every month and working with averages helps that but then imagine every three months wait okay whatever's in my profit account I get to give myself a bonus and go on a holiday and do those amazing things so you're not depriving yourself you're just changing the structure of how you do it you know that at the end of every quarter you know there's going to be a lump sum of money there and you get to celebrate and do whatever you want with that money. Um, of course, you can use your profit account to, you know, blast with a debt if there's debt and things like that. We can get strategic about it. But in a nutshell, um, it's just giving you a process for that excitement versus restriction. We hate restriction. The mindset of restriction is not great. So it's just being having an understanding of a financially healthy way to to enjoy life and have fun. You know what? That sounds like so much more fun than what, I mean, I've had so many financial advisors and accountants that I've met with over the years and I quite often end up zoning out and they're probably telling me very good information, but they don't tell it to me in a way that resonates with, with me or break it down really simple and easy. But what you're sharing today is it's really simple. It's really easy. It's exciting almost like, you yeah. know, for me looking at a bank account that's got money actually in it. Um, when you're somebody that's used to living week to week at times, or for most of my adulthood, I was used to living week to week. Um, that That's amazing way to look at it. But, but our, these accountants and financial advisors don't really share this stuff with us. No. And that's a problem. And look, um, the, we have a, an organization in Australia. So there's a, there's a profit first organization in Australia that's a branch from the American version. So Mark McCullough, which has Profit first professionals all over the world now, which is amazing. So the information is starting to spread. And within Profit First, there are Profit First accountants, bookkeepers, and then coaches as well, like myself. And so more and more accountants are starting to catch on that this is the way that business owners actually need to handle their cash flow so that they have visibility. 
because the business owners aren't, I don't have their head in spreadsheets all day, every day. They need to set something up that's going to work with the psychology of how we actually use money and protect ourselves from spending our money in the wrong way. So it is catching on, but no, traditionally, uh, we just haven't been taught how to manage our cash flow in a way that actually works for us as a business owner. It's always been like, this is the traditional accounting method fit into that box and it doesn't bloody work. No, absolutely not. Now, talk to me about money mindset because I always find that really fascinating and I've had a previous guest on actually the podcast who did talk about, dived into the topic of money mindset. What does that look like and how do we get into that mindset of attracting money or abundance or flow? Yeah, my goodness, I love that. So the way that I like to think about money is your cash flow system is like the foundations of your life. It's like the the brick and mortar. And then the money mindset is like, you know, the excitement, the cream, the abundance on the top. So we need both for the for it to work effectively because you you know, you need to understand your money to feel good about money because if you feel out of control, then that's going to automatically affect your mindset. Um, so we want to sort that out. And then our money mindset is so important because it's going to determine basically what we attract and the way that we that we move in life. If you think about it, like if you've had a bad day or you've had a bad week and you're just in that mindset and you're thinking all of these negative things, more and more negativity breeds, right? If people think it's really woo-woo, but it's just human nature if you walk into a room with somebody and they're in a really bad mood you feel that straight away and it brings if you're in a really good mood I bet your mood really like sunk and you went to that level so our mindset really attract it really determines how we feel and the actions that we take if we decide to foster an abundance positive money mindset guess what we're going to attract more money into our lives and we're going to put ourselves in situations where we can um attract more money so uh a way that we can actually foster and change our money mindset because these patterns and beliefs really started as we were children. We were listening to conversations with our parents, the people that were around us and the way that they were talking about money, that all has an impact. And then, you know, what happens to us in our early teens with money, like that has an impact of how, of how we feel. So that happened over a long period of time. We need to use repetition to, to retrain our mindset to be more abundant. And I've actually got a really quick daily practice that is super quick and easy to implement into your life. You can do it in five minutes a day, even as a busy mom of three with young kids, like you can make this happen. Would you like me to share it? Absolutely. Please, please do. Um, I should, should I get my pen and paper out? Yeah. So I did this. Um, I actually taught a money mindset group with about 20 women. This was a few years ago now. And we did this over six weeks. And then um, a lot of them have actually incorporated it into their life. From this day on, and this is I still use this daily practice from now. And that what came out of it was just so exciting. So many stories of financial abundance and just, you know, both practical but also little miracles as well. It's really exciting what you focus on, you attract. So the daily practice is this, right? Just get out a journal or a piece of paper and then at the top of it, write the date. And then today is going to be an amazing day. Or, you know, today was an amazing day if you have to do it at night time. Whatever time of the day is fine. You then write three things that you're grateful for. And you want them to change every day. Now, the purpose of that is when you're writing what you're grateful for, you can't be in a bad mood at the same time and you're focusing on gratitude. So you're really feeling, getting into the feeling of feeling abundant by just writing the three things that you're grateful for. And you want that to change every day. Because if you're just writing the same crap every day, you're just going to do it automatically and you're not going to feel it, okay? The second thing that you write is three um, abundant affirmations in the way that they've already happened. So if you're really focusing on transforming your financial abundance, it might be um, money flows to me effortlessly. I'm always supported by money. I've always got money for the needs and the, you know, the lifestyle that I've, you know, that I've created, that's three, just three. And you can do it about personal things, relationships, whatever you want, but just three affirmations as though they've already happened and they also change daily. And then five goals. So this is probably going to take you the longest and what, I, but the first time you do it. So I want you to think about five goals that you just really desire to create and three of them have to be stretch goals, okay? And then you write these five goals on the page as though they've already happened and they don't change. They have to stay the same every day, like just write the same five goals until you either achieve them or you no longer 
align with one of them and it's just no longer on your path. I can tell you that the goals that I had on my list three years ago have all happened. One of them, to give you an example, was so I had Lily, my eldest daughter, when I was 20. So um, separated from her dad by the time she was three. And finances, I was living week to week like you. And I always would walk past Geelong College and I would just dream of her going to this school. And I used to tell her, I'm like, you know, you're not going to be disadvantaged just because you have a young mom. You're going to have, you know, you're going to go to this school and you're going to have the best life ever, right? So one of my goals on there was Lily goes to Geelong College. She's in, or Lily's in year seven at Geelong College and she's thriving, right? At the time when I started that goal in the daily practice, there is no way I had the finances for her to be able to go to that school. She's in year eight now at Geelong College and she's thriving. I've got scary bumps. Seriously. And so if you think about it from a practical point of view, you're literally just putting your focus on what you want to create in the world very quickly, five minutes every day, right? You know, when you wanted to buy a car, you decided you wanted to buy a red Mazda. You see red Mazdas everywhere around you. Same when I was pregnant, I saw pregnant women everywhere. What you're tuned into, you attract. And so whether it's, you know, you start having conversations with people about it or, um, you know, just new little pathways get opened up to you, that is a really amazing daily practice to change those pathways in your mind because it's a repetition because the more that you write it particularly and you're reading it and you're feeling it, it becomes you. It becomes your reality. There's been so much talk of stress, overwhelm and burnout in property management lately. Do you want to know how I overcame all of that? Yes, I hit rock bottom multiple times, but I got myself a virtual assistant. Actually, not just one, but three. But I didn't just get any VA, I got a PMVA. What are they? Well, they are the most well-trained in the business. And not only that, you also have a backup VA. So that essentially, your business is never without admin support ever again. And my health, time and business has never looked back. Your PMVA can take care of tasks like rent arrears, lease preparation and renewals, maintenance follow-up, routine inspection bookings, data entry, audits, prospecting, inbox management, and so much more. And the best part of implementing a PMVA in my business was that it freed up my time and my team's time to take care of important things like customer service. What makes me feel so safe is that PMVA is owned by Tiffany Botel, both here and in the Philippines, making my data secure and giving me more control over the VA arrangement. So head to the link in the show notes to book in your discovery call with Lady Boss Tiff. I absolutely love that. And I will definitely share that in the show notes as well. I think that's, or if you've got a link to that daily practice through something yeah, that you've I've got. A, I'll write it on a, um, actually I've got it. I'll, um, I've got it in a workbook, so I'll send it to you so that you can, um, you can share that out as well. Absolutely. That is amazing. I've got, and I've had some similar stories myself, uh, when I was in a bit of a financial position in my business, I actually sat down with an accountant and he actually told me we'd, we'd made a million dollars and I was like, you know, shocked. I didn't even realize that the revenue I was generating was a million dollars. And then I said, well, where's all the money then? And he said, well, there's your problem. Your expenses are exceeding your revenue. So, and the topic, and, 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 and so I'll come back to what I'm, the question I want to ask you, but I then, um, started down doing some research on that money mindset and, you know, obviously I'm able to create money, but how do I now keep the money? Um, and I started, I had a bit of a daily mantra where I was like, you know, I deserve money. I felt part of my story was that I didn't feel like I was worthy of it or deserve. And all of a sudden, you know, um, opportunities were coming. A company gave us a car. Um, I had, um like an electricity company, they were giving us referrals, paying us referrals for tenants. Insurance companies were giving us referral fees. And just, yeah, all of a sudden, this money that I wasn't even chasing sort of started flowing in, um, which then obviously created the next year when I sat down with the account and we'd actually made a very small profit. So um, I can totally relate to your story and that mindset and those mantras and daily practices. Uh, I probably need to get back into them. Um, but let's talk about 
that that theme I've just mentioned there about you know being able to generate revenue and property management, real estate businesses are all really good at generating revenue. There's good revenue coming in through commissions, but there's also a lot of expenses and um, but yeah, and that revenue is not profit. Yeah, and you're right. Revenue is not profit, and we had a very similar story. I actually felt the same way. I always felt like I could make money, but keeping it was my thing. I could never keep it. It would just come through my life as quickly as possible. I'd spend it or whatever would happen. Um, and so I had to transform that money mindset too. And so I love how you did that. That's absolutely incredible. Um, but you're right. Money is not profit. And I've worked with so many multi-million dollar businesses. I do cash flow analysis on like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And a lot, you know, heaps of those businesses have been in the multi-millions of dollars. And a lot of them have been just as fragile as a business not even earning six figures because there's just no profit in the business. Like if some, if a big bill came or something happened, that whole business could just crumble around them regardless of how much revenue they were making. Um, and because that is the whole thing of, you know, a lot of people have the the false mindset of, I just need to make more money. When I earn $10,000 a month or $20,000 a month or $30,000 a month, that's when I'm going to be financially free. And that is absolutely not the case because as our income grows, so do our expenses because we're taking on more, you know, bigger offices, more team, more software, more everything just kind of keeps manifesting. And it sounds really hopeless, but it's absolutely not. But we just have to really be aware of our expenses and make sure that we're keeping them below a point so that we have profit and we can pay ourselves and we can pay our taxes. A lot of the time when we get into these situations and I've been there before, we're just running blind. We're not aware and we just think because we're making more money that the expenses are going to cover themselves. There's going to be heaps of money to do everything. But, you know, particularly with the cost of living rising, and I know this was a problem before this, everything is more expensive. So we've got to get really diligent and be resourceful and be like, do I actually need all of those expenses? Where can I cut the fat that's not adding value to the business? How can I be more resourceful and yeah, and just do things more efficiently? And I like to sometimes flip it because sometimes we get really desensitized to money, particularly when it comes into the business. And I like to think, okay, you've got an excess of $5,000 a month, right? In your expenses, for example. Imagine that $5,000 taking your family to Bali or imagine that $5,000 blessing this or doing this. So I think we've got to sometimes adjust our mindset of what that money actually means and how it's going to actually better be used in the business. But yeah, it's a real problem. Revenue does not mean profit. If we're not focusing on our, on our profit and we're not actively putting our profit away, it will just get eaten up by expenses. I promise you that. It's like a tube of toothpaste. When you have the tube of toothpaste to start with, you're liberally applying it all over the toothbrush. And then when, um, you know, there's not much toothpaste that you're like getting the last little bit out and squeezing it, like that's the resourcefulness, right? But when we've got heaps of money there, we're just like, oh, whatever, sign that check, sign this, tap the card, do this. Um, not often really understanding or thinking about what we're spending our money on. Um, so this system actually just gives you so much more empowerment and financial clarity and better decision-making skills because you've already taken your tax away. You've taken your profit out. You've taken your owner's pay out. What you've got left is what you can spend. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I love that. There's some very valuable tips and lessons in there for anyone listening and business owners. We're going to quickly sort of go take a bit of a curve ball. And I want to talk about your new business for a second. Um, because there is a lot of people in our audience that are startup business owners. And I know a lot of them that I coach or talk to or DM with, they are, there's a lot of fear around them starting their own businesses. And I imagine you in particular, you know, you said your first business wasn't failed in your yeah. words. I don't like to say. I, I, yeah. I consciously closed it, but that was a failure to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I've had little businesses as well that I haven't taken anywhere either, um, and so, yeah, so how did you overcome that fear that, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm assuming it's you got financially educated, um, but yeah, talk to me about your new business and yeah. overcoming that fear to start again. Yeah. So you're right. Um, part of it was being financially educated and understanding what I'm responsible for, for the get-go as being a business owner and, and what that means financially, because that was my biggest fear being a business owner again was, oh my God, like I... 
I can't be a business owner because I don't have my hand on the finances and I'm going to stuff it up. Like that's what I was telling myself all the time. So um, that did change for me over time as I became a profit first professional, but uh, we've, we've got another um, business that we're launching in the States next month. It's actually a sparkling carva beverage, which basically we've taken the, the active carva lactone out of the, the carva and we've put it into a really good tasting drink. And so we're launching it in the States next month. And so I'm going through that startup process all over again. And, um, and I guess it's what I've been really conscious of doing is, and obviously costs do blow out when you're a startup, but you know, you can never forecast every single expense that you just have to make sure you can be comfortable with a buffer of extra money for that part of it. But what you can do is you can really look at it and go, okay, how much do I need to charge if I know I'm putting my, I've got to pay tax, I've got to do this kind of stuff. Um, How can I set myself up properly and think about my money properly from the get-go? And that does come with educating yourself. So I do say say with any startup, don't delay. I I hear time and time again, I'm a new business owner. I haven't got everything figured out, so I'm not going to worry about my finances now. That is the worst mindset. Set yourself up now because that, you know, by doing it, you're going to get information very quickly. The numbers are black and white and they don't lie. It's going to show you, have I actually priced my services high enough? Have I got enough money that I'm going to be able to put aside for tax? Um, And then also you can reverse engineer your numbers to be like, okay, well, if my expenses are this amount, how much do I need to charge to be able to make all of that work? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a a, a topic for another conversation about, um, you know, charging for our value, charging for our worth, because I know personally, I always feel bad almost, you know, uh, charging, you know, uh, and I do find I do a lot of um, love work. Yep. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, I've got to make a profit, not just revenue. So I'll make um, it. Let's talk about that just for one second, because what I find again, when we're charging, we, we see the end number of say, for example, it's a thousand dollars for a service, right? We go, oh, that's a lot of money, a thousand dollars. But we're not really necessarily thinking about the tax that comes out of it, the expenses and all of the operating expenses. So when you um when you have a cash flow system and you're able to split it out into the categories, it actually becomes so blatantly obvious if you're charging enough or not, because you get to see the little bit that's left over that you actually get to pay yourself or, you know, and is a profit in the business. And that's when it becomes like a no brainer to charge your worth because you see it in plain day what you're actually benefiting from that service. And a lot of people just straight away from seeing the cash flow that way, they're like, oh my God, what am I doing? Put my prices up. And then they build that confidence because they're like, well, I'm not, you know, I, I've got my expenses in check. I'm only doing the things I need to, to run this business efficiently. Therefore, the only solution if they want my service is for me to charge accordingly. That's very good. That's great advice. I love it. Now, I love personal development and I am... I get the feeling you do too. Can you share a resource, book, podcast, something that you think um, would help our listeners improve their financial education or um, mindset? Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So obviously read the Profit First book for your financial wellbeing. Um, And then, you know, there's Denise Duffel Thomas. There's lots of great money mindset books out there, but um Something that I'm really passionate about is building wealth and also creating passive income for your business. So if it's something that you're interested in learning, I'd go and read Russell Brunson's books. He's got the Expert Secrets trilogy. So it's like dot-com secrets, expert secrets, and traffic secrets. And it really just teaches you how to simply create, you know, whether it's a digital product, it could even be from a property management point of view. It could be an an e-book or something super simple that you can just design on Canva or, you know, all the top tips for having your property managed or, you know, something super simple. And then you can just drive some revenue to it and make passive income. So you're not, you know, you're making money in your sleep basically. So there are three, three books that really changed my life and allowed me to create additional passive income in my life. And I recommend them to anyone because they're really easy to understand. Yeah. I'm actually reading .com secrets right now. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beside my bed. Yeah. Oh my Uh, God. I mean, I've got, I usually got about three or four books on the go at one time and I kind of, which one am I resonating with at the moment and read them? I think the other one is, um, 
it's down here on the floor. It's um, the most powerful woman in the room is you. So um, that's a really good one too. But you also gave us the other powerful tool, um, which was the, that that daily um, the daily practice. The daily practice. So yes. um, I'm yes. send that to you. Yeah, that I think that's is also a very valuable tool that um, I would love our audience to do and then share with us what comes out of it for them because that's the power of it, isn't it? Is actually seeing that it works for other people. So, and you and I can both attest that it does work. Those manifesting powers, or you know, what are universal powers, whatever. And I know a lot of people aren't into the woohoo, but I I, I think they're just universal laws that. Um, it's even just plain science, like whatever we focus our attention on and comes into our, um, our existence. Like, and, and I, that probably the way I said that sounds woo woo too, but you know, you can't deny the whole car situation when you're looking, you know, you want a car, you see them everywhere. It's just whatever comes into our, um, thought process, we, we're more open to, we're more receptive to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how can our audience connect further with you or, uh, find out more about the Profit First Method? Yeah, sure. So my website is amybet.com, A-M-Y double, uh, spelled that wrong. Let's start again. Uh, I should know how to spell my name. Um, so amybet, A-M-Y-B-E-T-T.com. And I've got my free masterclass on there as well. So you can actually go and watch that and actually take you through the step-by-step process of how to set up a cash flow system into your business. I talk about what it is, what bank accounts, you know, are really attributed to that. I talk a bit about how much money to put in different areas of your business. So we discuss percentages. Um, I just try and make it in a really easy to digest manner. Um, but yeah, you can find all of my information on my website. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have really enjoyed that conversation. Oh, me too. It's been so fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Property inspections, entries, exits, incomings, outgoings, routine inspections, whatever you call them you have to do them. And I remember when I first started as a property manager, you had to handwrite the reports and take notes on a digital camera, then upload the photo memory card to your computer and hope and pray that they weren't all blurry or your computer had enough memory to store them. But gone are those days. Thanks to Inspection Express. Now, Inspection Express is not only the number one tool used by leading property managers across Australia and New Zealand, but the leader in groundbreaking new tech in the industry with the launch of 360 degree virtual tours. Now virtual tours is upping the ante, giving landlords, owners and directors unparalleled 360 degree virtual access to their properties. So head to the link in the show notes to book in your free demo with Inspection Express. If you love the Property Management Podcast, you've got to check out the PM Collective, hosted by my friend, Ashley Goodchild. She discusses things like how to have awkward conversations about pay rises, um, yes please, how to raise the bar in property management, and why so many people just seem to fall into the industry. You've got to love stories like that. She'll leave you with great advice, actionable steps to take, and let you know that you're not alone in any of the challenges that you face. So be sure to check out the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts. Can I ask you a quick favor before you leave this episode? Now we all know how important reviews are for businesses these days and mine is no different. If you could spare just a minute to follow, rate and review this podcast, it would mean a lot to me. In fact, what would get me super excited is if you share this podcast with someone in the industry who you think might need to hear some of the episodes right now. And if you'd like to find out more about working with me or any of the products I have to help you start, grow or scale your property management business, head to my website, thatpropertymum.com.au or check out the links in the show notes.